Hey everyone, um, tonight I thought I'd make a quick video showing off Foresight Sports new software called FSX Pro. So I've just recently installed it on my computer and if any of you are out there aren't familiar with FSX Pro, it is um, basically performance data or fitting data. It is a separate piece of software. Um, it is free software from Foresight Sports if you are an owner of the FSX 2020 software bundle. So if you're already a, an owner of FSX 2020, you can go to the Foresight Sports website right now today and download and install FSX Pro. Um, so basically uh, I have it installed right now and we open it up and we'll take a quick look at uh, the new software. So as of today, the release date, the software is only available for PC and by February 10th it should be available for iOS. Um, just a note for everyone, this will not work on Mac. At this point in time there's no um, software that's going to be developed for Mac. It's uh, PC and iOS. iOS should be released on February the 10th. And also the current software that we're talking about today, FSX Pro, is available today, February 3rd. Um, earlier today it came out. It's available for GC Hawk and GC Quad and the GC2 will be added at the same time as iOS on February the 10th. So on a quick look, um, this is the page that it opens up into immediately and when you first install the software, obviously I already have, the first thing uh, when you click on the, um, the software and open it up, it's going to ask you for your user and password. This is the user and password that you would use on your FSX Live portal or the user password that's been set up with Foresight Sports when you uh, first bought your software, um, FSX 2020. So same user, same password. If you are a, a owner of FSX 2020, like I said, you can get this software free of charge forever. But before we get into uh, hitting some golf shots and walking through the software, I thought I would just do a quick uh, wander through the settings and just want to point out that I've literally wandered around this software for five minutes so I'm going to do a little stumbling here so please bear with me. Um, looking at the initial general settings, uh, we have a virtual keyboard, pretty self-explanatory, uh, I'm don't have, i not interested so not turned on. We have player management, I'm going to get into that next after we go through the settings. Multi-monitor, um, very similar to what I use here in my simulator bay. I have an impact screen through a projector and a TV flat screen on the wall for um, a second dual monitor. The dual monitor, the TV is what I'm uh, making this video off of today, so I have my dual monitor turned on. Um, studio mode, um, basically if we turn studio mode, mode off, obviously everything gets nice and bright, and this is going to be a, a nice feature to have if you're working off of a tablet, um, iPad, out on the range, outdoors, you have the bright sun shining on your screen. Um, you might need some brightness added to uh, the software. And if you're similar to my scenario right now, inside of a controlled environment in the simulator bay, it's uh, quite bright actually when I do turn this screen to this mode. So I'm going to turn it back to studio mode. Everything uh, background goes dark and um, a little easier to look at for indoors in a darker environment. Then we have personal branding. Um, just for fun, I added my logo. I've just recently deleted it, but you can go in here, add your logo, add your course, your um, club membership. If you're um, uh, a training professional, a coach, you can go in here and put your company logo. You can either have it at a square as a one by one square or a banner in six by nine that'll fill up this entire screen. Languages, a uh, quick look just so uh, any of the people from overseas having a look and wondering if this is in their uh, local language. Well, we do have a few, so uh, take note at that. Units, we're going to leave it on Imperial, and here's some examples of what a Imperial is for carry distance and ball speed. Obviously, it's yards, miles per hour, and then we have metric, which is meters and kilometers per hour, but for our intents and purposes, we're in Imperial. Um, spin display, we have total spin or spin access. Uh, I'm, have, I'm leaving it on backspin and side spin, and that's my example of backspin, side spin, or total and spin access basically gives you the example. And then we have direction polarity um, for left and right shots. Uh, I leave it on the plus and the minus sign. Basically, this is an example of uh, a left shot with a negative sign. If you're on the right side, uh, 
you were going to have just basically it's going to say 3.5 you do have the option to hit left or right and it's going to put an L or an R depending on what side of the line that you've pushed or pulled your golf shot um, again I'm just going to leave it on the, the plus and minus tags I'll get into here shortly uh, once we get into hitting some shots and then of course device in my case I'm using a GC quad so I've uh, connected my device, checked the box, says this is my device, and turned on auto connect. So when I start this software, it's automatically going to connect for me, and I don't have to come in here and manually hit the connect button. Pretty basic, pretty simple settings. Uh, from there, the only option we have is performance analysis. But once we get into performance analysis, there's even more settings, more options, and we're going to go through them as quick as we can and try not to bore everybody that uh, might be watching this. So because this is my software and I have to install the software and unlock it with my user and password, it by default, it's already added my username into here. Um, I already logged five sessions and this is in my five minutes of trial and making this video. I had to do a couple of restarts for uh, just kind of stumbling through this software. But um, basically you can click on your name and hit view and inside here you can edit your name, put your nickname, first name, uh, obviously my email address, you have your gender, skill level, I've just chosen recreation, but we have uh, a 510, a bogey player, a scratch, a tour golfer, etc. In my case, I just put recreational. Through a handicap in here, there is a bit of a flaw with the birthday. Um, so we're month, day, year. So um, month, day, year, and my age pops up automatically as 2020. So a bit of a glitch there, but has no effect on the software whatsoever. And then of course, hand this on, we're picking right, and if you're lefty, obviously you're picking left. And that's gonna show you the, the club data. It'll have the, the club orientated the correct way if you choose left and right properly when you create a player. So from here, we're gonna hit save. If there is a, another player that was in here that was using the software, obviously we're gonna come up here and add a player just like you've seen in here. And they do have a search button as well. So if, you have a, if you're a golf coach, or you have a rental bay, you can have hundreds of players in here, you can just do a quick search, click on that player, and then get into the current session. session. So one really nice feature that they've added is one-click club selection. So for anyone that's, a, that's a familiar with FSX 2020, when you go to um, pick a club that you've tagged in your library of arsenal of different irons, hybrids, whatever it might be, you have to hit a drop down box and then scroll through a long list. Um, in this case, they've gone through and just made one, one click club selection, which is really nice. So if we were testing a four iron, we would hit four iron. Um, for the, the uh, scenario that I'm gonna be taking a look at today, I'm gonna compare two clubs um, and I'm gonna compare two wedges. I just happen to have two different pitching wedges inside my simulator base. So we'll do a comparison between two wedges and that'll give us an idea of what some of the options are and it'll kind of take us on a path looking at a few of the different options that are available in this piece of software. But since we are comparing two pitching wedges, one thing that's very important is we're going to have to tag them and we want to tag them so that we know which wedge we're hitting and uh, which one we're comparing otherwise they're both going to say PW. So in my case I'm going to be comparing a TaylorMade P7MC and the tag can be whatever you want it to be. Um, you can go through and completely type out TaylorMade, uh, in this case P7MC. From there, we're going to add a tag. And then uh, I'm also going to compare uh, another pitching wedge. And it's the new, this year's model of the Vokey pitching wedge, the SM8. Oops, 8. And we're going to add that one. Um, I'm going to unhighlight the SM8 and we'll hit the uh, P7MC first. So I've added the two tags. From there, we're good. You can choose a ball as well. Um, I'm just going to choose a premium ball, and we're just going to leave it at that. I'm using a Pro V1X. So premium ball, range ball, consumer ball, uh, your choice. I'll just click on premium for the, this purpose. From here, we go into the driving range. And before we hit some golf shots, we'll take a look at a couple different options that we have inside the driving range. Uh, we'll have to hit some golf shots to have a look at them. and. Uh, actually, I might do that right off the bat so that we can see some of our, um, our tiles and some of the data that's populated. So um, before we do that, this is the straight on view of the driving range. We also have multiple camera views and this is, gives you three dimensional views. So we can have a look at uh, multiple views 
of our golf shots. And once we've hit a couple shots and we see the tracer, that will uh, give us a better idea of what that's looking like. So for now, let's see if I can hit a straight-ish golf shot for you. And we're going to hit probably three shots per pitching wedge just to give us a, a, a group to look at. Um, one shot isn't much of a comparison. It doesn't give you a lot of uh, um, dispersion patterns or anything. So we want to hit at least three shots per club. So uh, for the video, I might fast forward this. Um, if I get too lazy and I don't, well, I apologize. So you might just fast forward yourself. So I hit a bit of a draw there, first shot, and uh, we're using the TaylorMade P7MC. Little push. <clears throat> and another one up to the right. Great start, eh? So we've hit those three shots, a little bit wild, but the nature of golf straight off the, the office chair. But before we choose our second club, we're going to have to go back into the tags. And you can see on the left-hand corner that we just hit our shots of the P7MC. And you can see our average um, backspin, which is nice. So there's a really cool feature here, and we'll take a look at it right now. If we come in here and hit average, it pops up with all of our club and ball data tiles. You only get to choose one. Um, in my case right now, I have it on backspin. But if I wanted to uh, consider what is my side spin, um, total offline, launch direction, angle of attack, lie angle, whatever it might be, let's say carry yardage. As soon as I hit, highlight the carry yardage tile, it's going to automatically show me my average of those shots and the average of the three shots right here. So pretty cool, pretty neat little da um, uh, data, a uh, nice little software setting touch here. For now, let's close that, and we're gonna get back into the tag. I'm gonna unhighlight the um, TaylorMade wedge, and I'm gonna highlight the Vokey wedge. Once we're there, we're gonna hit apply, and automatically it's changed the color of what our tracer is gonna be from red to green. And it says it's empty because we haven't hit any shots yet. So let's go through, hit a couple shots with that club. There's one. There's an ugly duck. <clears throat> There's the three. So that one was a little fat. I apologize, I come straight off the office chair and hit some ugly shots for you guys, but the point is the software, so we're gonna have a look and you can see that we've got our three shots for the the Vokey wedge and the three shots for our Tanner made wedge. Total average, uh, 130. I typically carry my pitching wedge about 140, so um, just not in a warm up state. But we got our total averages here. Again, we can click uh, whatever options we want out of the particular tiles here, and we can just say what is our angle of attack average. And it'll go through and show us the angle of attack for each shot, and then the average between those three shots per golf club. So we'll get out of that. The tiles at the bottom of the screen, they've made it uh, very user friendly. So I've just left this, it's almost stock standard from installing the software. I did add a couple extra tiles. But basically what you get as an option is here's all the tiles that are currently selected at the bottom of our screen. You can come in here and remove some of the tiles, kind of shorten it up so that it's a, a little easier and maybe you're only focused on, I don't know, ball speed, um, club speed, um, efficiency, basically what I have here, some carry distance. Or maybe you, you're, you're interested in the club path 
and the angle of attack and you can just keep on adding things and the tiles will get smaller as you add so you can basically you can have everything or you can have one option so pretty neat that you can uh, set this up to your preference and keep things simple if you're working with uh, some golfers that are really only worried about uh, their carry distance or their total distance um, you can just basically set up one tile if that's what you're you're interested in so thought we'd take a quick look at those tiles on the bottom since we're here we'll have a look at the different screens or the different views the camera views um, you can turn off the grid so right now I have the grid on the screen here for the yardage you can turn that on and off so it's just basically a, a blank uh, canvas of green um, you get the overhead view uh, the side view gives you an understanding of what that trajectory is on that peak height and then of course the view that we were looking at when we were hitting those shots one nice feature is when you come over to the left panel to those individual shots you can come in here and we've just seen our last shot from the Voki wedge in green here that SM8 wedge shot number six we can go in here and if we want to see a replay of um, shot number one we can just left click it once see that very first shot from that tailor-made pitching wedge and kind of replay it we can go into different camera views when we do that let's have a look at uh, maybe the side view and click uh, shot number four and watch the side view of our shot number four from the bulky wedge so you can do that obviously with all the wedges all the shots and go through and look at them in multiple different camera angles uh, we'll go and have a look at this camera angle pretty neat feature um, very simple uh, other software usually you have to click the shot hit play fast forward stop pause um, this is just basically click the number and and watch the shot fly so pretty neat and the overhead view because i have these settings turned on that's giving us that green shot it's telling us that we're four yards offline and obviously plus so we're right side of the center line and if we went and hit uh number one with the tailor-made wedge different color you can see that we've pulled it a bit and it's gone to the left and it's uh, negative so it's left of the line and it's five yards offline so cool little cool little feature let's get into a few of the other displays that we have um, one of them that we can look at quickly is the dispersion display and um, let's quickly look at and see what the, the different views look like so you get basically the side view of the trajectory and you get the top view of uh, the line um, we can turn grid like I said the grid and the accuracy on so now it's showing us uh, how far offline we are or what our peak height is if we follow across and look at our peak height you can kind of see what some of the trajectories are what else do we have in here Go back to the range view and see what the dispersion looks like. I'm going to turn the compare button on. And here's the top view of dispersion. And you can see the dispersion for our uh, tailor-made wedge versus our bulky wedge. Um, I wouldn't take too much out of that, guys. So um, we're just smacking some shots, not really paying too much attention to making some good clean shots. But gives you a, a good look at what the dispersion looks like um, you can see it from the side angle a different view of what the dispersion is when we're comparing the two clubs side by side um, a little bit of the mess that I just made here from the two the six shots between the two wedges as a comparison um, what else do we have in here so now that we're comparing the clubs and we have the grid on we have the dispersion and the accuracy on you can see what the, the look looks like for the trajectory. We can see the overhead view of the spraying from left to right. We could just go in and just look at the top view from this angle with the grid zone as well. We can just look at the side view. Uh, the other feature that we have here is the table. A table is um, the same as a table that you guys have seen on the the FSX software, the 2020 version software. Um, many videos that we have posted looking at tables. What is uh, neat and unique about the table 
is we can come in here and basically the, the parameters that are set right now, club speed, launch angle, spin rate, carry, offline, etc. Um, that's what the basics are for the table. So we can come in here and uh, if there's a, a couple mishit shots, which obviously I had, we can quickly just unsee them. If we're trying to look at averages and it'll kind of not officially delete the shot, but it'll take it out of your average with just one, one click just by hitting the uh, little eye icon on the side and it'll um, subtract that shot from the total averages across the board. And as you can see, I'm clicking it. If you're looking at the averages at the very top line here, as I click the shots, you'll see the numbers change. So pretty quick, pretty neat feature. But one cool thing about the, um, the table is we can come in here similar to the tiles at the bottom and we can come in here and we can add extra data points for the table and the more we add the bigger the table gets that's um, the name of the game and you can come in here and obviously I was just clicking all the club data but then we have all the options for the ball data the ball flight data and the group data as well um, they got a few new options like spray um, the dispersion that you can clearly see that we quickly looked at the spray consistency in yards um, so if we highlighted and I've added a bunch of uh, data points and tiles for the table now we can see that the table has gotten a whole bunch more data in it. So the nice feature about this is if you're providing a report to a client and we don't need to overcomplicate things for what that particular user is going to understand, you can come in here and, and simplify it for that particular user. Uh, I'm just going to delete some of these right now and get some of these tiles out just because it's so busy. And uh, I'm just going to get this really cleaned up. So as you see, as I got rid of all those data points, we just ended up with uh, just randomly clicking them quickly, uh, club speed, ball speed, launch angle, spin axis, and spin rate. So if those were the, the data points that you cared about, they're right here, and we can compare the two clubs again. Um, what else do we have for options? I guess probably the most well-known feature of the... Um, Foresight products, specifically the GC Quad, would be um, all the club data. And right now I'm going to leave it on all. And again, the label vis visibility of angle of attack, I'm going to leave everything on and I'll just leave it at face to path or face to target, either or, just so we can have a quick look. But basically, uh, that's what we're looking at. And we can see the three shots for uh, the particular club that uh, I'm looking at right now. The three impact positions, not that special, a real big toe strike, and it's giving us a look at our club data in detail. And from there, we can go in here, and if we were only concerned about the path or the uh, impact position, well, we can get rid of all of this and simplify it for the user, for the coach, whoever this person might be, and come down, and it just took all the data points off, but our, uh, our path, and our impact position for the particular shot that I'm highlighted right now. And if I want the other shot, shot number two, it highlights the impact position with the re highlighted red dot and a little bit of imprint of dimples. Um, maybe we want to look at the number six shot and we can see that we hit it high on the face, a little bit fat that shot was. So pretty neat that you can really um, set up all the data points to your liking. And um, it's good for the, the user, good for the coach. Uh, currently, I have everything on all. We can look at a top view. Get out of here and we'll have a look at the top view. We can look at the impact view of those shots, up close and personal, and so on. We kind of get the point there. So let's turn all back on. And once you've got your, your, your data in, you've hit your shots, you want to share your data with Perhaps it's yourself, perhaps it's a client, it's just a, a colleague that's uh, trying out some clubs or, or working on his game. Uh, instantly we can come into the reports section here, hit the reports button, give it a few seconds to populate. I didn't add any session notes, but you can come in here and add, edit your session notes. Let's zoom in one more notch here. Um, automatically by default today's date it's added in here and it's been prepared by me for me because I happen to be the user and the owner of the software 
So we have a table of contents that's giving us our wedge summary, our wedge club summary, and so on. And as we scroll down the report, we can start seeing our session summary, the comparison averages between the tailor-made pitching wedge and the Vokey pitching wedge. You can see that nice, clean, displayed average. So in this case, if we were trying right now, if we were only worried about which one gives me more ball speed, which one's going to produce, um, what do I got in here, carry the furthest carry, if that was what our concern was, well, obviously we can complete quickly look between the two clubs, compare them both and go, well, the, the tailor-made has given me more carry and obviously more ball speed. If everything else was equal, then we would say, all right, tailor-made is, is the, the wedge for us. Again, so um, that's page two. We can keep scrolling down. And page two is going to give you a, a look at some impact position and some club data as the comparison and the average. Um, we're going to look at uh, some more information this one specifically on I'm not sure if you can see it on your screen the tailor-made P7MC so this is the three shot cluster that we hit for just that particular wedge so that we can look at each individual data point for all three of those shots so that was the, the um, first wedge we hit and then we are just looking purely at those three shots at the impact positions angle of attack um, path here we're looking at, again, I'm not sure if you can see that label. This is the SMA tag for the bulky wedge. And here's the information for all three shots. The average in our report, this is page six with a nice little picture. Very similar to what a lot of you would have seen on uh, TrackMan uh, reports. If anybody's ever worked with TrackMan or did a club fitting uh, on a TrackMan um, launch monitor, uh, very similar report to what TrackMan produces. And again, that bulky uh, SMA uh, wedge for the club data. So from here, this uh, looks like seven page report. I can go up here and I can print a hard copy. I can export it to a PDF, save it on a hard drive, do whatever I want with it, or I can attach it directly to an email, send it to myself, send it to uh, a potential client. If I was a golf coach, um, could do all these different things. And uh, we'll zoom down here a little bit and zoom right in if you're really wanting to get a good look at what we have going on. If the uh, site isn't that good, you can zoom into the numbers and everything focuses just like a stock standard PDF right inside the piece of software. So a couple good options. Again, hard copy print. We can just click export and it's gonna, we can rename it and it's going to export it to a PDF. Put it anywhere, save it anywhere on your computer. Pretty uh, basic stuff. We can email it and it's going to send it to uh, my email or we can hit print. So for now let's uh, get out of there. So that's pretty much the gist of the software. Um, pretty basic, pretty user friendly, a lot of nice features that we have. Now if anybody's got any questions uh, feel free to put them in the comments below. I'm just noticing I never turned off my swing camera. I apologize for that. I hope the video uh, is still usable for, for you guys viewing. Um, if not, I guess I'm learning just now that that was on. I might have to redo this, but uh, that's a, another day's project. So if there's anything uh, for you, you viewers out there that you want to get into in more detail on a particular piece or settings of this software or if you just want to see more of it, uh, feel free to comment below. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. There's going to be plenty more videos looking at the FSX Pro software. Uh, when I get a chance, possibly this weekend, I might do a gapping session or something like that with this particular software just to, add, to give you a, a, a good look at some of the other features or different things that we can use this software for. So keep in mind, it is free from uh, Foresight Sports. Thanks a bunch, Foresight Sports. Um, look forward to getting familiar with the software and using it. And um, for all you users out there that are looking for the um, GC2 version of this or the iOS version, that's gonna be released February 10th. Um, anyway, Thanks for sticking in there for the long video that it was. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.